Good evening, everyone. So we are back, and uh, uh, I apologize. Last week there was no video. Uh, I was suffering from very severe bout of viral fever. I hope I have recovered enough to start continuing these lectures now. And uh, so we'll continue the series that we were discussing before that. We were discussing retinoids in dermatology, and we have covered introduction to retinoids. We have covered topical retinoids in last two videos. And I would request you to go back and see those videos again. The reason being that further retinoids will be very easy to understand if you know the basics of retinoids. I will not be delving much into the mechanism of action per se or uh, rather adverse effects per se because we have covered everything into introduction to retinoids video. Okay. So the basic understanding of how retinoids and vitamin A analogs work are all covered in the previous videos. What we are going to do right now is to discuss individual retinoids, uh, you know, slide separately, few important points regarding each one of them. And when you go through these videos, you'll be able to understand uh, when to use which retinoid, when to go for systemic, when to rely only on topical. Should you use isotretinoin in seborrheic dermatitis or uh, multiple wards? Or should you use isotretinoin in psoriasis? So these are all questions that we are going to answer through this video and without further waiting, we'll start this week's discussion on isotretinoin in dermatology. So isotretinoin is 13 cis retinoic acid. So you can remember this by the word cis, iso cis. They sound a bit similar. So 13 cis retinoic acid is isotretinoin. It's a yellow orange crystalline powder. The dose that we use in, our, in skin issues is 0.5 to 1 milligram per kg per day. Okay. There are articles where you can go as high as 4 to 6 mg per kg per day. But routinely 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per day is all you require. And, and there are articles that mention that if you maintain the patient on a very low dose isotretinoin, as low as 0.5 to 1 mg per week, uh, per kg per week, that is also beneficial in the long run. Okay, so we'll uh, talk about those disorders or those uh, specific indications as we go along this video. Isotretinoin is available as 10, 20, 40 milligram soft gelatin or soya capsules. So people who are very uh, apprehensive about using gelatin capsule because they are a vegetarian, so, soya capsules are also available, but remember that these can individually act as allergens in patients who are sensitive to these constituents. Otherwise, gelatin and soya capsules are uh, the main form through in which isotretinoin is uh, manufactured. So, most of us know isotretinoin as an oblong or an oval red colored capsule. And that is usually how we make sure that the patient is taking it so that they remember it. It's a more dark color, brownish red colored capsule. Isotretinoin is highly lipophilic, that means fat loving. It's a very highly fat loving molecule. Remember that vitamin A is fat loving vitamin, it's a fat soluble vitamin. So, all vitamin A analogs like isotretinoin is also lipophilic. Like vitamin A, absorption is also increased with fatty meals. So, it's a good idea to give early in the morning with breakfast. Okay. Volverden mentions that best absorption happens when the patient takes isotretinoin in an empty stomach state but with food. So that's the best possible time that you can give is early morning with breakfast. Okay. Half-life is about 22 hours. Bioavailability is about 25% which is low. The protein binding is more than 99.9% .9 binding to albumin. So, albumin is the main protein constituent in the plasma which binds isotretinoin, okay? And it's very uh, highly bound to this albumin, more than 99.9%. .9%. So, all the drugs that might replace isotretinoin from its binding site on albumin can inadvertently increase the activity of isotretinoin, okay? We'll discuss them when we'll be discussing drug interactions. Inside the body, isotretinoin gets metabolized to 4-oxoretinoic acid retinoic acid and 4-oxoisotretinoin and all of these are active metabolites in which 4-oxoisotretinoin is the most active metabolite. So much so that multiple people have said that we should regard isotretinoin as a pro-drug 
that means the maximum activity is give is attributed to that metabolite which comes from isotretinoin rather than isotretinoin itself okay so many people believe that we should regard isotretinoin as a prodrug rather than uh, less than a drug because it gets converted into multiple metabolites and each of the metabolites are are responsible for the further action of isotretinoin excretion of isotretinoin happens to urine and feces so uh, we have discussed the mechanism of action of in the of retinoids in uh, quite a detail in the video on introduction to retinoids we have discussed how it is absorbed from small intestine uh, intestines how the molecule is transferred to liver where it is stored how it is transferred from liver to skin and what all it does at the level of skin okay uh, so i will not be going through each and individual uh, mechanism of action of retinoids how it exactly the retinoic acid enters the cell goes to the nuclear material attaches itself to the rxr rar receptors complexes attached to the dna response elements and furthermore leads to translation of all the important proteins which are required for keratogenesis and inflammatory mediators okay so all those the all those uh, mechanism of action have been discussed in detail in the video on introduction to retinoids i would like to request you to go back and see that video again and you'll be having a, you you'll have a good understanding a good grasp on concepts on how retinoids work inside the body here i will discuss only uh, specific or special ways through which isotretinoin is different from other retinoids number one being the sebocyte apoptosis so isotretinoin has been shown to have majority effect on sebum suppression so isotretinoin has a good action on sebum producing cells the sebocytes the way that it leads to decrease sebum production has been attributed to sebocyte apoptosis that means killing of the uh, or sebocytes or the cell sebum producing cells two ligands that have been mentioned number one is trail trail is tumor necrosis factor related apoptosis inducing ligand the other is ngal or neutrophil gelatinous associated lipocalin these two molecules are responsible for apoptosis so isotretinoin induces apoptosis of sebocytes by the action of trail and ngal there are other uh, other mechanisms also but the major mechanism as of now is for trail and ngal there is also up regulation of foxo 3a IGF binding protein 3 and trail and these are individually all apoptotic factors they will increase the apoptosis and that's how sebocytes are destroyed the same mechanism has been attributed to to lead to apoptosis in adult t cell leukemia cells b16 f10 melanoma cells primary human keratinocytes or dalton lymphoma cytis cells you don't have to memorize any of this just remember that there have been indications of usage of isotretinoin in ctcl ctcl okay cutaneous t cell lymphoma and the way it acts is to induce apoptosis in leukemia cells or keratinocytes or, or, or lymphoma cells and the way isotretinoin induces apoptosis is through the action of trail and ngal which are activated by foxo 3a okay so let's discuss a bit about apoptosis induced by isotretinoin isotretinoin has the maximum potential of sebum suppression and that is due to sebocyte apoptosis what actually happens is that it activates foxo 3a which then activates trail and ngal which then leads to apoptosis it's a complicated mechanism but just understand very easily that foxo 3a activation leads to trail and ngal activation leads to apoptosis now puberty hormones insulin like growth factors insulin hyperglycemic diet milk product diet <laughs> they all stimulate kinase akt and kinase akt what it does is let's say you have the fox o3 a okay kinase akt phosphorylates it the addition of this phosphoryl group deactivates fox o3 a when fox o3 a is deactivated the trail and ngal pathway is not activated and sebocyte apoptosis does not occur that is the reason why during puberty or hormonal imbalances 
or having a milk rich diet hyperglycemic diet leads to acne breakouts because the sebum secretion has now increased it is not being controlled by the mechanism of foxo 3a so that is one uh, way it has been explained why these kind of dietary uh, dietary intakes can lead to increased acne that is through suppression of foxo 3a Additional mechanism is activation of P21 and P27 uh, genes which induces BCL2 and we know that BCL2 is pro-apoptotic. So activation of BCL2 will lead to increased apoptosis. That is how isotretinoin uh, leads to sebocyte apoptosis. Query side effects. That means most of the side effects that we know are attributed to isotretinoin as because of apoptosis. Let's say primary epiphyseal closure or the teratogenicity has all been linked because of apoptosis. That does isotretinoin does not allow cells to survive, and that is the reason why all the side effects start to occur. For example, hair loss, chelitis, or any other further dryness, uh, teratogenicity, uh, bone issues, myalgia. So all of this have been attributed to isotretinoin induced apoptosis. So here it is just a pictorial representation. You have 13 cis retinoic acid, which is isotretinoin, which undergoes isomerization to form ATRA, all trans retinoic acid, which binds to RAR, RXR, activates FOXO3A. FOXO3A will activate DRAIL, which will activate caspase 8 and 3, leading to apoptosis. Okay. FOXO3A also activates FOXO1, which will activate P21, P27, leading to cell cycle arrest. So isotretinoin leads to apoptosis and isotretinoin also does not allow the cell to grow. So that is how it limits the proliferation of cells, predominantly sebocytes. Now in acne, isotretinoin is the, uh, I would say drug of choice uh, because most of the time we also hear around that most of the dermatologists prefer isotretinoin. They started on the first session itself. I don't. <laughs> my threshold of starting isotretinoin is a bit higher i rely first on topical retinoids topical management if the patient has severe acne uh, scarring acne nodulocystic acne these are the indications where i prefer to start isotretinoin initially okay in acne isotretinoin leads to significant reduction in sebum production Rem remember that the maximum sebum suppression effect is seen in isotretinoin it also influences comatogenesis. So we know that microcomedones are the starting lesion of acne. Okay. Microcomedone formation are the starting lesion of acne. So isotretinoin inhibits the formation of microcomedones. It's anti-inflammatory like all retinoids. It also lowers surface and ductal QT bacterium acne concentration. QT bacterium acne is the new name of propionobacterium acne. Okay, so now we have to say is as C acne. It has been found that the action can be independent of RAR and RXR, and there are, as we have discussed in the first slide, that many uh, many dermatologists regard isotretinoin as a prodrug because it gets get gets metabolized or converted into other retinoids. And that is how the action takes place. So some say that it has an independent action. Some say it's because of RAR, RXR. Some say isotretinoin is enough to start the action. But most of the articles mention that the majority of the action is by the metabolites of isotretinoin. So it may be regarded as a kind of prodrug. I don't because isotretinoin individually has an activity in a, as, as a retinoid, as a vitamin A analog. So, FDA has approved isotretinoin for severe acne not responding to antibiotics. So, that is the uh, use, use case or that is the indication of isotretinoin in acne. But we can use it uh, in severe uh, acne which has a lot of scarring tendency or we can use it in severe acne in males where it is comparatively safer as compared to females. So, that can also be there. So, uh, we have discussed the mechanism of action of isotretinoin. Isotretinoin has all the, uh, all the different mechanism of actions like any other retinoids. Addition to that, there is increase, uh, there is some more of sebocyte apoptosis that has been linked with isotretinoin. And that is the reason you use isotretinoin more in acne where the sebocyte proliferation and sebocyte action is more. So, you use isotretinoin more there. 
you don't hear using isotretinoin in psoriasis you rely on acetretin there because the indication or the mechanism of action is a little bit different we'll discuss the use of acetretinoin in psoriasis in a separate video but isotretinoin has its majority action or a major action on SIBO sites. So all the disorders which are responsible because of high SIBO site production are the indications for using isotretinoin. Clear? So let's start first with acne. So first major use is acne. So it is FDA approved for severe acne not responding to antibiotics. The dose ranges from 0.5 mg per kg to 1 mg per kg per day. Roughly 85% clear in 16 weeks. So you have to assure the patient that it takes time. Some patients can have initial flare-up. So you need to control the initial flare-up also. If it is mild flare-up, you just counsel the patient and continue the treatment. If it is major flare-up, you may add uh, drugs like uh, omnicodyl, you know, some short, very short course of systemic steroids to take care of the inflammation, okay? Now, cumulative dose of 120 to 150 mg per kg. What do we mean by that? That means in a certain duration of isotretinoin therapy, the total dose that you have given over the entire duration should not exceed 120 mg per kg. So that is the limit, that is the upper threshold that we have put on ourselves that we should not use more than this amount of isotretinoin. There are cases where 150 mg per kg was put the uh, above level and there are articles which have gone as high as 400 mg per kg. And they have mentioned that using higher dose of isotretinoin leads to a bit less relapses but a lot more side effects. So 120 was arbitrarily decided that this should be the cutoff that we should not cross. Significant improvement is seen in 4 to 6 months. So you have to repeatedly counsel the patient to continue the treatment. It takes time for the SIBO sites to stabilize, the inflammatory activity to stabilize. So patients should continue isotretinoin for at least that month. Low doses to prevent relapses and slow tapering. So these are two things which you can do at the end. For example, a patient of severe acne comes and you start isotretinoin. And now the patient is uh, good enough, more than 99%, 95% improved. So instead of stopping isotretinoin suddenly, it's better to taper it. Either give alternate days or you give it like, for example, you have started on 20 mg per day. Now shift to 10 mg, 10 to mg then shift to 10, 10, then shift to 10 alternate days, slow tapering, okay, so that there is no rebound as such. So that's a good idea and in the long run, it actually prevents the relapses if you start, if you maintain on slightly very low doses of isotretinoin. There have been instances and articles do mention weekly doses of isotretinoin as a maintenance regimen. So what are the prognostic factors which will influence the early use of isotretinoin? We are talking about early use. Whether, where, wherever, uh, what, are, what all patients uh, should you consider using isotretinoin earlier? So if you have family history of severe acne, if there is early onset acne, hyperseboria, remember that the major action is on sebum glands, truncal acne, this is one indication that I use, scarring, that is another indication that I use, psychosocial difficulties, remember that uh, acne is in itself a big enough psychosocial issue and leads to a difficulty in it damages the confidence of the patient so if that damaging uh, effect is there for acne it's better to start isotretinoin persistent or late onset acne is also an indication where i used it frequently what are the reasons for not good response now this was what i was searching because uh, i don't use isotretinoin that often as i use uh, tetracyclines or benzoyl peroxide and all those drugs okay uh, so i wanted to know what all factors could uh, could could point towards that patient not having a good response to isotretinoin because in conferences we hear that start isotretinoin, start isotretinoin, it works. Yes, it works. It's a very good drug for acne. It just takes time. It might show initial flare-up. And there are patients who might not respond that well to isotretinoin. So what are the factors that you can keep in mind? For example, there can be macrocomedones or so large comedones that the acne, the isotretinoin is not uh, helping to that extent or requires much more time. Okay. So in 70% of the cases, macrocomedones was found to be the cause. Hyperandrogenism, for example, if patient is having uh, PCOS, okay, PCOD, or any other uh, uh, CH, any other disorders where androgens are more. Poor absorption, compliance issues have to be checked 
there are physiological differences in receptor sensitivity that could be one of the reasons colonization with staph aureus in which you have to add uh, tetracyclines severe acne or unusual variants which might take a lot of time or even higher doses of isoprotein to respond <laughs> to respond properly and in 5% about 5% of cases you may not find the reason for no response but what i have felt that most important is compliance issues poor absorption people have stopped using acetatin because it uh, because of the pregnancy related side effects or the excessive dryness of skin so these are the reasons why uh, your patient might not show good response to isotretinoin. The second use is seborrheic dermatitis. Isotretinoin is found to significantly decrease scalp pruritus, sebum production, and increase quality of life when compared to only topical treatment. So, as we have said earlier, that isotretinoin significantly decreases sebum production, significantly uh, leads to sebocyte apoptosis. So, in seborrheic dermatitis, where the inflammation of sebum glands or uh, the seborrheic areas is more is predominantly the pathological feature, isotretinoin works. The dose is about 10 to 20 mg per day for 2 to 6 months. There is significant reduction in symptoms. <laughs> As per one systemic review, it was found to be more effective than oral itraconazole, antifungal shampoos, or salicylic acid containing soaps. So, isotretinoin can be a good agent to control a severe case of seborrheic dermatitis, which might not be responding to other drugs like uh, itraconazole, ketoconazole, or any kind of, you know, uh, tacrolimus and all anti inflammatory agents. If it's not responding and it's more seborrheic, it's a good idea to consider isotretinoin in those patients. The third case is rosacea. So in rosacea, isotretinoin has found to reduce sebocyte proliferation, sebum production, inflammatory process, and telangiectasias. Now remember that uh, that retinoids are also anti-inflammatory agents. We have discussed that in the in, in our introduction to retinoids video. How uh, how usage of retinoic acid leads to decrease inflammations. We have discussed that in that video. Okay. So in rosacea, you have the inflammatory responses, and because of inflammatory responses, you have severe redness, erythema, irritation. Okay. So all of this is managed by isotretinoin along with a significant action on sebocyte proliferation and sebum production. Okay. It modifies the skin microenvironment, changes the density of Demodex folliculorum. And we know that this is the organism which has been implicated in many cases of rosacea. So the density is also decreased. The dose is very low. It's about... <laughs> not exactly very low, but it is about uh, 0.3 mg per kg per day, lower dose. It has been found to be most effective. Complete remission after 12 weeks. Lower doses leads to about 90% clearance rate and that is how we have to maintain the patient on. It is comparable to other modes of treatment. So other modes like uh, met metronidazole, okay, anti-inflammatory agents. So isotretinoid is comparable to that. The fourth use is HS, hydrodenitis separativa. The mechanism is cell cycle arrest. We have told you the use of FOXO3A, FOXO1A, FOXO1, okay? Cellular differentiation, cell survival, apoptosis to prevent affected pilosebaceous glands from being occluded by ductal hypercornification. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's say you have a duct. And because of increased cornification or increased keratogenesis, this duct gets blocked. And this blockage will lead to inflammation. Okay, so maybe in the future we'll discuss the pathomechanism of hydronitis separativa. It's a very interesting uh, disorder to learn about. And this inflammation leads to chronically discharging uh, nodules and sinuses. So what happens is that isotretinoin corrects it. However, it has been found that acetretin is more, is, um, more beneficial as compared to isotretinoin. And early stage 1 and 2 have better outcomes. Okay, in this article from which I've taken this bar graph, 15 to 25 percent patients improve, but around 7 percent can show a flare on stopping isotretinoin. And if you look at this bar graph, you will see that the response is somewhat same. In, in case when we are comparing complete response, partial response, no response, that means complete response you can see in about one third of cases, while the other third have partial response and the other third will have no response. So that's another drug in our uh, armamedium. 
for uh, for heterogeneous heterogeneous separative r okay so let's move forward Now, we have discussed the major major use in good enough dermatosis now we will quickly discuss uses in other different kind of skin disorders the first one is genodermatosis okay in xeroderma pigmentosum about 63% decrease was seen in tumor clearance but there were high relapses after discontinuation remember in most of the disorders stopping isotretinoin can lead to high relapses okay so that is one point that you should remember about isotretinoin that discontinuation can lead to high relapses high relapses okay enantiosis Laminar ichthyosis has shown better response in on isotretinoin. The other ichthyosis include Harlequin ichthyosis, uh, in which you can start treatment as early as possible. Okay, maintenance is required because the moment you stop isotretinoin, the disease uh, disorder starts to come back. So a low dose maintenance is often required. Same for Daggett's disease, good response, but relapses are common. HPV or human papilloma virus. Number one is warts. So in warts, isotretinoin has immunomodulatory effect, which induces apoptosis. We have discussed that. It downregulates HPV transcription. It affects epithelial differentiation and proliferation. And differentiation and proliferation is what HPV requires to create this mound of skin in which it survives. So isotretinoin stops HPV. To uh, leading to um, increasing the uh, skin quantity at the site of infection. Okay, that's what we are trying to say. It induces apoptosis, and it properly uh, uh, the the process of keratinization undergoes properly, not impacted by HPV infection. That is what isotretinoin does. So isotretinoin with intralesal immunotherapy has found to have better clearance rates with lower recurrence. Okay, so you, it's a it's a very good idea to combine isotretinoin with other treatment modalities rather than relying only on isotretinoin. Okay. Second is flat wart. There are good uh, good improvement is seen in about one to two months, but recurrences may require maintenance. <clears throat> so, um, personally, I rely more on topical retinoids. I have rarely given. Uh, Systemic retinoids. There was one pediatric case that I remember, around 13-14 years of age, in which acetretin was being given, and he had good improvement. Otherwise, I rely more on topical, unless until the extent is uh, is uh, is a lot, so that you require systemic therapy. Let's say if the face is only involved with the verruca plana, topical retinoids do good enough job in two to three months. Okay, condyloma acuminata. High dose has found to be better as compared to low dose, and 76% of the patient have complete clearance roughly. And combination treatment is better. So what do we learn here? That uh, response is good, but combination is better, and it's better to combine isotretinoin with treatments like intralesal immunotherapy, okay, or uh, or let's say cryotherapy. One question that arises is if immunomodulatory effects. Have any uh, damaging effects to immunotherapy? Okay, immunomodulatory effects of isotretinoin hampers with the immunotherapy. That is one question that comes to my mind just now. Maybe we'll get some answer. Maybe we won't. Let's see. In skin cancers, so uh, there were guidelines issued by the uh, European. Congress of Dermatology, not Congress, European Association of Dermatology (EADV) guidelines, or you can say BAD guidelines, the British Association of Dermatology, in which they had initially many years ago said that BCC and SCC these are good disorders in which you can give isotretinoin to prevent recurrence. Okay, but right now the evidence on prevention is very unclear. Whether if a patient who got free from BCC and if you Keep on giving low dose isotretinoin. Whether it prevents newer BCC to form, the evidence is not that clear. Okay, so in BCC, about 36 to 50 percent reduction was seen with 0.2 to 8.2 milligram per kg per day in about 2 to 12 months, but the prevention evidence is not that clear. In SCC, 35 percent reduction was seen starting from the first, uh, starting from two weeks onwards, and it was better when isotretinoin was combined with interferon alpha. Okay, so interferon alpha is also used to take care of uh, carcinomas. So when you combine that with isotretinoin, the response was seen much better.
In leukoplakia, the response was about two-third patients in two to three months. But prevention and relapses are two things which are problematic, whether isotretinoin can prevent recurrence or relapses. So that is one thing that we don't have much good evidence as of now. Keratoacanthoma showed good response in two weeks, but the relapses was again common. And CTCL, in CTCL, isotretinoin works by changing multiple signaling pathways in cellular differentiation and the apoptosis of the affected cells. Okay, the dose is mentioned and for 2-3 to three months it has found to be effective, but about one-fourth of patients can have a relapse. Better with combination therapy. So what do we know about then? Know, uh, in, know about the use of isotretinoin in cancers. Effect is seen, but relapses are there. Relapses are there. And uh, prevention, we don't have better, we don't have good evidence to say whether it prevents development of carcinomas or not. And the combination treatment is better. Combined with interferon alpha or other modalities. Okay, so these four points we should remember. Effect is positively there in half to two third of patients. Relapses are frequent on stopping medication. Prevention, not good enough data. And combination therapies are always better. So these four points are enough to know about the use of isotretinoin in skin cancers. Other uses include folliculitis decalvins where combination treatment is better, dissecting folliculitis where it acts by suppressing sebaceous gland, anti-inflammatory effect, normalization of keratinization. Okay, in psoriasis, acid protein is better. So we'll discuss this when we'll be discussing acid protein. And it isotretinoin shows good improvement in combination with PUVA. So combining the combination is better. That's what we are seeing. Relapses are there. Combination is better. In PIP, pityriasis rubra calaris, it normalizes keratinization. The dose is 0.4 to 4 mg per kg per day. And, but the relapses are frequent. And this is a disease which is known to relapse whenever any of the modalities stop. Lupus erythematosus, lichen planus, lichen plano pilaris, granuloma annular are other disorders in which isotretinoin has shown some effect. In aging, isotretinoin was not found to be very effective. And we are talking about uh, uh, oral isotretinoin. Topical retinoids are better for as an anti, uh, not anti-aging, as a delayed aging mechanism. Okay, so topical agents are much better to counteract photo-aging, but systemic isotretinoin was not found to be better. Okay, let's move forward. So we have discussed in detail the mechanism of action, pharmacology, uses of isotretinoin. Now we'll discuss adverse effects. Okay, so majority of the adverse effects include dry lip, which is seen in about 100% of patients, dryness, facial erythema, epistaxis, chelitis, okay, muscle aches or myalgias. <coughs> And muscle aches are seen more in gym going people, people who are already doing some heavy exercises, okay. Itching of the skin, mostly because of the dryness. Exfoliation of the skin, you know very common complaint. Tiredness, headaches, joint aches, again in gym going people. Retinoid dermatitis, this can happen, it is mostly seen with the topical retinoids. Trichronechia, because nail growth is suppressed, you know any dividing cell is, um, is affected by the apoptosis effect of isotretinoin. Very, very uh, less than 10% less than chances, mood change, okay, because depression has been reported to occur because of isotretinoin, so that's one thing. Dry eyes, hair loss is important, patient may complain of losing hair, it's reversible, don't worry. Abdominal pain, vision changes, sun sensitivity, dandruff, dryness of mucous membrane and mouth. It's a, another a common complaint. Skin fragility. Okay, so we, these are all the adverse effects of, if you want to list the adverse effects, these are the adverse effects of ISO 29. Least common mucocutaneous problems. That means only skin related adverse effects. Most common is chelitis, inflammation of the lip glands. Conjunctivitis, blepharitis, dermatitis, desquamation, these are all things which are occurring more than 50%. Facial erythema, epistaxis, atrophy, skin fragility, hair loss in about 5% of patients, itching in about 25% of patients, xerosis, mucositis. So these are all the side effects. I'll just remove these uh, markings. So you can just look at all the side effects. 
and list them. So these are skin specific side effects of <laughs> isotretinoin. Least common side effects include, we'll just go through it, Achilles tendonitis, acne fulminance, depression, is it, that is important. Diarrhea colitis, isotretinoin has been implicated in uh, initiation of irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease, but the evidence is not that, uh, you know, connecting. Uh, so, we have to be just on the lookout of uh, patient developing diarrhea, colitis or abdominal pain. Headache or benign intracranial hypertension, this is seen when you combine the treatment of isotretinoin with tetracyclines, okay. High tone deafness, mood changes, night blindness, which is uh, somewhat counterintuitive because vitamin A is given for night blindness. Paronychia, pyogenic granulomas, that's an important side effect, very uncommon, but side effect. Urticaria, vasculitis, sticky palms, all the side effects. Let's discuss isotretinoin induced teratogenicity. It's very important. The moment you mention to your female patients or in fact male also that this can have an effect on developing fetus, you will be made, you will be uh, dealing with highly anxious patients now who before your meeting was suffering from severe acne and now they are suffering from severe acne and anxiety due to treatment. So we need to know what actually isotretinoin does uh, to lead to teratogenicity. The reason is increased apoptosis during neural development. That is how the teratogenicity happens. I have told you that isotretinoin leads to apoptosis to various mechanisms. This can be BCL2, uh, FOXO3OA, FOXO1. So all these mechanisms can lead to apoptosis. So when the embryo is developing, you know that that is a stage of rapid cell division. So isotretinoin leads to apoptosis of cell division. The cell organelles, sorry, the cell organ systems are not able to form correctly. And that leads to improper development of organs during embryogenesis leading to teratogenicity. In utero exposure can have about 20 to 35 percent risk of developing uh, deformities. The defects include craniofacial defects, cardiovascular, neurological malformations, thymic disorders, neurocognitive impairments and others. Disorders like microtia, anosia, micrognathia, aortic arch or heart defects, thymic ectopia, aplasia, cerebral vermis agenesis are all reported. Now if you notice them, the most of the deformities are centered around the face. And it has been postulated that the development of trigeminal ganglion in the embryo is hampered by isotretinoin and this hampering leads to defective, defective arches. So if you remember, <coughs> if you remember your embryology, uh, all of the structures, uh, micro, uh, all of the ear structures, eye structures, middle face structures are derived from the arches. Oh, I uh, sorry. Just excuse me, coughing in between. The throat is still recovering. So when the arches, the development of arches are hampered, the structures arising from individual arches are also hampered. So that is the reason why you have majorly of uh, carotid, sorry, not carotid, cardiovascular abnormalities, craniofacial defects. So that is a that is a uh, a way to remember that during neural development. The development is hampered by isotretinoin, leading to defective formation of facial structures, cardiac structures, uh, brain and spinal cord structures. Thymus is also derived from that. So, neurocognitive impairment. So, this is a very easy way to remember what all can happen if the embryo is exposed to isotretinoin. So, isotretinoin and pregnancy, it's a category extra. Okay. The conversation should stop here. That is why you say, uh, that is why you always need to have proper written consent if you are giving isotretinoin in a female patient of reproductive age group. Written consent explaining everything, the chances of teratogenicity. Uh, tell them that if they plan to conceive, they should consult you so that you can stop the medications. 
do not take those medications uh, you know without doctor supervision because these will hamper the pregnancy even lower doses or short durations can hamper the pregnancy but the chances have been found to be low isotretinoin has to be stopped at least 3 to 6 months before conception so if there's a planned pregnancy and the patient says that i am planning to conceive in the next 3 to 6 months you stop isotretinoin okay otherwise you stop isotretinoin as soon as you uh, come to know of the pregnancy it has been found in some articles that 35 days post conception if even if isotretinoin is taken by chance it is perfect perfectly okay but every dose of isotretinoin has some non zero probability of harming the fetus if the dose is very very low you can continue with the pregnancy as long as all the ultrasound and all the markers of deformities there are markers of deformities which gynae people know okay you have all those hcgs and estriol okay all those triple markers and quadruple markers pentuple markers usg markers these are very highly scientific markers that you can use to find out deformities if the fetus is growing properly let the pregnancy continue always advise to use two different methods of contraception this does include abstinence but we know that abstinence has its own failure rates every contraception has its own failure rates but we have to counsel them to use two different methods of contraception so you can use barrier with hormone okay you can use barrier with iucd so this can be used males are okay it has been found if you look at uh, cr video on introduction to retinoids we have discussed that the transmission of retinoids in spermatozoa or in the seminal fluid is very low it's very extremely low so the transmission to the fetus is not there practically in practically non existent so you you can use isotretinoin in males you need not stop it some guidelines mention that you stop it 6 months prior to pregnancy and 3 months prior to pregnancy two different data are given this is for females for males 3 month is a good safe alternative if the patient is very much concerned let's say it's a planned pregnancy it's an ivf pregnancy so patient will be concerned a lot so uh, stop isotretinoin timely okay make sure you counsel make sure you get a written consent speaking of written consent we will discuss a bit about the i pledge program okay or rems what is rems it's a good viva question it's a good viva question what is rems rems is risk risk eval risk evaluation and mitigation strategy okay rems risk evaluation and mitigation strategy and i pledge is a strategy in which the patient pledges that i will not get pregnant while on isotretinoin or i will tell my doctor that i have conceived while on isotretinoin or all the information regarding the usage of isotretinoin in the reproductive age group females will be provided to the patient so i pledge is a fda approved safety program to manage the risk of isotretinoin teratogenicity and to minimize fetal exposure this program was started in 2006 so in this program you educate the patient about the possible teratogenic side effects of isotretinoin and make sure that the patient understands okay so in this program you have registered approved healthcare providers for example in us if you are a dermatologist you have to get registered in the iplesh program before you are authorized to dispense isotretinoin the pharmacies are also approved so you have to approve the providers you have to approve pharmacies a pharmacy has to get license or some some sort of approval i'm not that sure some sort of approval from the iplesh program in order to dispense isotretinoin to the patients The program is also responsible to educate patients on the risk of isotretinoin and the contraception requirements and there are for example frequent reminders will be sent to the patient that get a pregnancy test done uh, let's say every 3 months or every 2 uh, months and record the findings on the site or on your profile so that we will will be able to know that you are uh, you may not you will not develop any teratogenic side effects of isotretinoin 
and they will give you you know constant reminders to get blood levels checked uh, LFT, KFT is done, a lipid profile is done on a regular basis. So that is how I pledge is there. Uh, let's say I want to give isoprenoid to a patient and I am registered under I pledge. So I will provide all the details into the I pledge, uh, I pledge platform after patient's consent, of course. And the patient will also get registered in the I pledge program. It will get uh, the isoprenoid will be dispensed from I pledge registered pharmacy to the patient. And I pledge program will make sure that the patient knows everything about isoprenoid and its possible side effects. And okay, the fourth is enroll appropriate patients. So enroll patients, educate patients, approve pharmacies, approved healthcare providers. These are four overview of the I pledge REMS program. Okay, isoprenoid is only available through this restricted distribution program so as to limit the teratogenicity. So this is the objective of I pledge, and this is the all the overview there have been other uh, programs for example there was first one was ppp ppp is pregnancy prevention program this actually failed and this led to i pledge okay so if you know about ppp mention in comments what was ppp i'm not asking the full form i told you the full form what were the points of ppp other is the smart program Okay, it's an acronym and this is your homework. Find out and let me know what is the SMART program. Is it still working? Is it not working? What were the reasons for stopping and starting? Everything. Okay, so this is your homework to the listeners. What was the SMART program? So this we have discussed I pledge. Okay. Other adverse effects like wound healing. So multiple times we have heard that uh, patient is on isotretinoin and a surgical modality has been uh, advised. Let's say patient has acne scars with active acne, you gave isotretinoin, the acne is gone. Now you have to do some surgical procedures to get rid of acne scars. And most of the guidelines say that no surgical procedure should be done within six months of stopping isotretinoin. The reason for that is because there have been reports and very, uh, you know, uh, reports with low sample size that isotretinoin lead, led to delayed wound healing and killer formation. So no surgery should be planned within six months. No surgical intervention less than six months of stopping. <laughs> Sorry, stopping isotretinoin. But recent evidences have shown that yes, you can undergo different surgical modalities, different surgical procedures, even if the patient is taking isoprenoin, the scarring tendency has found to be low. Why? Because the case reports were very low. <laughs> sorry, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Because the case uh, reports were, have very low sample size in which the adverse effects were found. And nowadays we tend to use lower doses of isoprenoin. Okay. Modalities like derma aberration, it has been found that uh, mechanical derma aberration is not recommended while the patient is on isoprenoin. But for manual derma aberration, the evidence was insufficient. Okay, so that th this I'm quoting uh, a review guideline. This is the reference review guidelines. I'll put the URL in the description. You can copy paste and read the whole guidelines that what is the level of evidence for different surgical modalities for patient on isoprenoin. Chemical peels. Superficial and medium chemical peels are okay. No deep peels like phenol peels. I don't think so. Anybody does phenol peel anymore. So no deep peels. Superficial and medium peels are okay. Laser hair removal. There is insufficient evidence. Fractional ablative or non-ablative lasers. Okay. But no fully ablative lasers should be used. Okay. So fractional ablative or non-ablative lasers are okay. Fully ablative lasers are not okay. Skin surgeries have inconsistent evidence. So, you have to tailor your advice from patient to patient. The psychiatric adverse effect. The adverse effects uh, of uh, psychological nature starts about 1 to 2 months after treatment. Isotretinoin crosses blood brain barrier. Remember, it's a lipid soluble molecule. It disrupts the function of hippocampus, corpus triatum, frontal cortex. That is the reason for the psychiatric side effects psychiatric side effects okay so side effects like you know depression okay self-harm tendencies 
psychosis. All of them have been reported with isotretinoin. The reason is the action on hippocampus. But always remember that acne itself can act as a significant psychiatric comorbidity. And because of that, the treatment of acne be becomes paramount. So that you have to give isotretinoin. The acne will resolve with time. And the patient will be out of acne induced psychiatric comorbidity or psychiatric issues. So if the patient is suffering from psychiatric issues because of acne, you can give isotretinoin, don't worry. You just have to make sure and ask the patient on regularly on each subsequent physical visits regarding different kind of mood uh, imbalances and everything else. And if at, if at any given point of time you do feel that there are some issues that must be tackled by a psychiatrist or psychologist, refer them, take their help. Okay, patient might be suffering from severe psychological issues due to acne and they will require psychiatric help. So never shy away from that. You're not a psychiatrist. Take their help. In recent years, the association has been said to be doubtful. But always, if your patient is suffering from psychological issues, whatever may be the cause, counsel them to take help from a psychiatrist and refer them to a good psychiatrist. Okay, let's move forward. <laughs> Drug interactions. That will be quick. Uh, reduced efficacy is seen with heavy alcohol intake. So no alcohol while in therapy. The, uh, the activity is increased with ketoconazole or other CYP enzyme inhibitors. Salicylic acid or endomethacin binds to albumin so they can displace isotretinoin. Remember I told you that isotretinoin <laughs> is more than 99.9% .9 bound to albumin. So anything, that means all the action is being carried by 0.1%. So, if only a slight dislodgement takes place and this 0.1 will become 0.2, you will have double the action. So, any drugs that can displace isotretinoin from its binding site, like salicylic acid or endomethacin, however, you require very high doses of that. But let's say if a patient is on uh, high dose painkillers for something, so isotretinoin can, uh, the activity of isotretinoin can be significantly increased. Isotretinoin decreases the level of carbamazepine. So, if the patient is on carbamazepine, you need to be careful. Benign intracranial hypertension have been observed with tetracycline. So, there have been uh, documented evidences that usage of tetracycline with isotretinoin has led to benign intracranial hypertension. Uh, in fact, pseudotumor cerebri are reported. It's a reported side effect. It's a warning in, on product insert also. The recent evidence suggests that you may use both of them together. The incidence have been low. I personally, in few instances, have used doxycycline with isotretinoin. There have been no effects of pseudotumor cerebra like uh, complaints. So, complaints include nausea, vertigo, vision disturbances, you know, uh, issues with increased intracranial pressure. So, you just need to ask that if everything is okay, if there's anything which is concerning you. Patient will tell you if they are having any symptoms. I have not felt it. I am, I am co conscious of using doxycycline with isotretinoin. But I do combine them when it is severe nodulocystic acne with pustules and all. I do combine with it with doxycycline. So with that, we finish today's discussion on isotretinoin. I hope it was beneficial. The reading recommendations are these articles. I'll put them in the description. Don't worry. This is a good article if you want to know very briefly what is the use of isotretinoin in dermatology. Okay. Uh, this will tell you about good, uh, good. It's, this is a good uh, analysis on uh, side effects of isotretinoin, and this is the article that I was mentioning, which tells you about various evidences of surgical procedures, whether you, you want to do it on isotretinoin or not. This is a good article if you want to know more about it. With that, I'll finish this week's discussion. Uh, I hope I was audible enough. I was good enough. My throat was helping me. Uh, just excuse the few bouts of cough that I had in between. The throat is still coming out of something quite detrimental. So, uh, isotretinoin is a good drug. So, let's conclude this by saying it's a very good drug. Uh, people use it left, right and center. My threshold is a bit high. I do use it when they use, uh, when the patient uh, requires isotretinoin. And, and I uh, start with 10, 20 milligrams gradually increasing or decreasing depending on the response and I do assure them. I do add omnocortal if the initial stages are inflammatory or if the patient has a flare-up. 
I do combine it with topicals. It's a very good drug to learn about. And if you know about the adverse effects, you will know the patient population in which you can safely use isoprotinone. So that's the benefit. If you know what bad can happen, you can easily use any drug because you are prepared for the adverse effects. So with that, I'll conclude this video. You can email me any comments, suggestions, any questions, queries. Although I prefer if you would mention them in the comment section so that other people can read and learn from these kind of doubts. Don't worry, everybody wants to learn. Even I am learning every day while making these videos. Okay. So any suggestions, doubts or queries, just mail me, email me, WhatsApp me, whatever you want to do. Till then, adios and bye-bye. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.